let's say I have the number 235, and then I have a big fat decimal point after it. I'm making it so huge because I'm going to write some things on the board. 235, these are the digits that are before the decimal point, so you know that this uh, first number means hundreds because we have 200. You know that this number here means uh, tens, and since there's a three here, that means 30. And you know this is like the ones place, and that means uh, since there's five here, it's five of them. So the 200 and the 30 and the five, we put it together as 235. Now after the decimal place is what we're going to focus a lot on here. Let's say I have some digits here. One, two, and seven. So here I have three digits before and three digits after. The main thing you need to know about decimal place value is the numbers after the decimal are telling you the, the farther and farther away you get from the decimal on the right hand side, the less important those values are. Okay, the less important those digits are, the more the less that, that they're worth. Okay, so you already know that in numbers here, let's talk about just the first three numbers. The first digit is worth the most. And then this is worth a little bit less, this is worth less. Well, the same thing continues on the other side of the decimal point. This is worth less, this is worth less, and this is worth even less. So the farther you go to the right, even after your decimal point, the less important or the less worth that digit actually has for you. So let's do some labeling. Um, we have three digits in this case that is on the left-hand side of this decimal point. Now, the first digit, or I should say the third digit to the left, we call that, we already talked about it, this is the hundreds, hundreds place, okay? So because it, that's 200, we already kind of know that. So let me draw a little line here. And then over here, the three, we already said, that's is called the tens place. So what we have here is Every number here is worth 10, and since we have 3, that means that's worth 30. And this digit here is called the ones place, but since we have 5 of them, this is really worth 5. So all of this stuff is stuff that we have learned uh, you know, many, many times in the past. Let me write it like this, and I'm going to draw this guy here. And then we have this thing called a decimal point, which I'm going to kind of draw some lines around too. And then we have to talk about what happens on the uh, right-hand side. First thing I want to tell you, though, is notice that we already saying this is hundreds place. So every number you have here is worth 100. That's why we call it the 100 hundreds place. Okay? This digit is called the tens place because every number we have here is worth 10. And this digit's called the ones place because every number we have here is worth 1. That's how we get 235 because two of these is worth 100, that's 200. Three of these is worth 10, that's 30. And five of these is worth just 1. So 235, that's how we construct everything on the, that side of the decimal point. But see, this pattern continues. Notice this digit is worth 100. This digit's worth 10. This digit's worth 1. So every time we go to the right like this... I'll do that in uh, blue here. Let me cut some of these guys short so we have a little room here. Every time we go to the right like this, let's see we start with this guy, like this. Okay, when we move from this digit to this digit, it's worth 10 times, that's what the X means, 10 times more. So in other words, as we move this way, this digit is worth 10 times more. As we move this way to this digit, this one's also worth 10 times more than the previous digit. That's how it's all set up. So I'm telling you all of this with this side of the decimal point because you all should know what the place value is for 235. You all should know that. But now let's go on the other side of the decimal point. And now that we've talked about this, everything that we're going to talk about on the other side of the decimal point should make absolute sense. So um, on the other side of the decimal point, um, this one is called the tenths, not the tens, the tenths place, all right? This one is called the hundredths place, and this one's called the thousandths place. Tens, hundreds, thousands. Now these words here, they should ring a bell to you because we've done a lot of work with fractions. If I say I have a tenth of a pound or a tenth of a meter, 
that's a fraction. That's one over 10. If I say I have a hundredth of a pound or one hundredth of a kilogram, that's one out of a hundred. That's a fraction, one over 100, and so on. So if I am going to write this down here, um, this spot here, it says it's tenths. Everything here is worth one over 10, one tenth. Everything here is hundredths. So this is worth one over 100th or hundredths place. Everything here is worth one over one thousandth. So let me ask you this. If you take the big picture into, into consideration, this is worth um, 10 or 100. This is worth 10. This is worth one. Suddenly we go on the other side of the decimal. This is worth less than one. This is one tenth because this is a fraction. Then we go this way. This is one one hundredth. That's even smaller. Then we go this way. We go one one thousandth. That's very, very small. So as we move this direction, we're getting smaller and smaller. So I'll use my uh, guy here to say that, hey, from the decimal point, as we go this way, we get 10 times bigger, and this time we get 10 times bigger again. Then, as we move this direction, we will say, I'll draw it like this and try to continue it here. This is 10 times smaller than this location because we're going from one to one tenth. That's like dividing by 10, it's 10 times smaller. And then we go from this place to this place, this is 10 times smaller. And then we go from this place to this place, which is also 10 times smaller. So that is sort of the big picture with, um, with um, decimal place value. We have these digits, we have the decimal point, and we can divide each thing up into its own spot. So the big picture is we have hundreds, which everything's worth 100. We have tens, everything's worth 10. We have ones, everything's worth one. Then we have a decimal point, everything on the other side is worth less than one. Everything here is worth a tenth. Everything here is worth a one one hundredth. Everything here is worth one one thousandth. So the digits as you get smaller, this, or I should say go to the right, this direction, are worth less and less and less and less. How much less? This is 10 times smaller than what this one was worth. This is 10 times smaller than what this one was worth. This is 10 times smaller than what this is worth. That's the big picture with decimal place value. So whenever you see lots of decimal or lots of numbers after the decimal, just keep in mind that the ones to the very far end of the, of the sequence on the right-hand side of the decimal, they're not worth very much. The most important numbers, they're worth more and more and more as you come to the front of the line like that. So keeping in mind this whole concept here that we have hundreds, tens, ones, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, we want to do a couple of problems. We want to do a couple of problems. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to draw this line right here and we're going to work a couple of problems here on the board. So when we write a number in what we call standard form, the way we write things in standard form for as far as numbers go would be something like 142.3. So this will be given to you, and I might ask you, or you might be asked, write this in expanded form. Write them in expanded form. So you know from experience this is 142.3. So what we want to do is we want to write down the value of each number there and show that we understand what that means. So the way you would write something like this in expanded form, since there's a one here and it's in the hundreds place, this is 100, the one is worth 100. And we're adding to that whatever this is worth, it's in the tens place and it's a four, so this is worth 40. And we're adding to that whatever this is worth, this is a two in the ones place, so he's worth two. So if there was nothing on the right hand side of the decimal, it would be 142. I think you all understand that. But we also do have a number after the decimal. So all we do is we say we have a three here, and since it's in this location, everything is worth 1 tenth. So what you're going to be doing is saying it's worth 3 tenths. Since each, each one of these is worth a tenth and there's three of them, then what you're actually adding here is 3 tenths. It's the same thing as so you have a 2 here and each one's worth 1, so you put a 2 there. So this whole number in expanded form is 100 plus 40 plus 2 plus 3 tenths. The little number after the decimal means that that's worth 3 tenths. Okay, means that that's worth three tenths. Um, let me go ahead and slide over here to the left and we'll do another one. We'll do several of these. Uh, what if we have standard form 
0.69, and we want to write this in expanded form. How do we write it in expanded form? Well, we know that the first digit is in the hundreds place, so that's worth 200. We know the next di digit is worth in the tens place, so this is worth 30. We know that this digit's in the one place, the ones place, so it's worth a five. Okay, that takes care of everything in front of the decimal. Then we have to add to it whatever this is worth. This is in the tenths place, the tenths place. So it's how many tenths? Six tenths, because there's six of them and each one of them's worth a tenth. But we're not done because we have to figure out what this is worth. This is in the hundredths place, hundredths place. There's nine of them, so it's nine one hundredths. So if you go and follow me here, this is 69 here, six, nine. The six is worth a tenth, uh, six of them worth a tenth, and nine of them worth one one hundredth. That's why we have six tenths and nine one hundredths. This is the value of this number, 235, and you have the six tenths and the nine one hundredths. This is really representing the value, the complete value of the whole number there. Let's do a couple of additionals. Let's say we have, 90.39 and we want to write this in expanded form. Well, we don't have any hundreds but we do have something in the tens place so the 9 is worth 90, right? And then the next thing we have a zero here and it's in the ones place but yeah it's, everything's worth one here but there's only there's zero of them so we don't really write anything down here. The 9 covers the 90, the zero is worth nothing. So then we go off to what's after the decimal. The three is in the tenths place, so we say three tenths. The nine is in the hundredths place, so we say nine one hundredth, or nine over one hundred. So we have 90 plus three tenths plus nine one hundredths. That is how we write that in expanded form. All right, let's get a little additional practice here. Let's say we have 529.1. 1, 2, 0.123. How would we write this in expanded form? Well, the 5 is in the hundreds place, so this is worth 500. The 2 is in the tens place, so that's worth 20. The 9 is in ones place, so that's worth 9. And then we move after the decimal. This is in the tenths place, so this is one tenth. This is in the hundredths place, so this is 2 over 100. And this is in the thousandths place because it's the third digit over, so it's three over 1,000. And this is how you write it here. Follow me here. With the decimal, one, two, three, this is like a decimal one, two, three. So this was worth 10 or 10th. This is worth one 100th. This is worth one over 1,000. So you literally just reconstruct the number based on what you're given. And we're gonna do one more problem of this type. What if we have 204? 0.103. How do we write this in expanded form? Well, we have a 2 in the hundreds place, so this is 200, plus we have 0 in the tens place, so we don't really need to write that, it's worth nothing. The 4 is in the ones place, so we just say plus 4. And then what we have on the right hand side, the 1 is in the tenths place, so 1 over 10. Now we have something in the hundredths place, but it's 0, so we don't have to write it. And then finally, this three is in the thousandths place, so we write it as three over 1,000. And that's it, 200 plus four plus one-tenth plus three one-thousandths, and that is basically uh, everything that we have here. So, so far we've introduced decimal place value, and we've shown how when we write down a number, how we can write it out and blow it up into expanded form. Very useful thing, you'll be definitely asked to do that. Now what I would like to do is do a different type of problem where we want to write down, we're going to be given a number and then we're going to write down in words what that number uh, uh, represents, but we're going to write it down in words. So we might say it's worth so many hundredths or so many thousandths. So we're going to go backwards, essentially. So what we have here is we have, let's say we have the number 62.12. What do we have here? So first what we do is we look at what's in front. We have 62 and we write that literally as 62. The 60 comes from the 6, the 2 comes from here. And then we write the word and, and then we have to write down in words what this is worth. Now we know that the 1 is worth uh, tenths and we know that the 2 is worth hundredths. We could try to write it like that, but instead we look and say we have 12 here and we can also write it as 12 
hundreds. That's how you're going to write it in words. So you're not going to say one tenths and two uh, hundredths. You're going to say instead twelve hundredths. Let me show you how that's the case because you might not understand why that's the case. So let me draw a little arrow here. This 0.12 here is really one tenth plus two hundredth, right? That's what this represents. We've been saying that all along. This is worth tenths and this is worth hundredths. Now, we know how to add fractions. We've been doing this all along. In order to add fractions, you need a common denominator, okay? So we want to add these together. So I'm going to transform this, this one-tenth, I'm going to transform it to get a common denominator by multiplying top and bottom by 10 because I want to get 100 on the bottom. So now, I did not change the second fraction at all. I have two hundredths here. All I did was change this fraction to 10, multiplying by 10 over 10. The reason I'm doing that is because now I have 10 here over 100 plus two over 100. And how do you add these together? You should know by now. You have a common denominator, so it's gonna be over 100. 10 plus two is 12. So what I'm trying to say is, is that writing it out blown out here in terms of tenths and then this digit in the hundredths place, when you actually do the fractions, it comes out to twelve hundredths. Twelve hundredths. That's why we're writing it as twelve hundredths. So that's the math behind it, but if you ever get stuck, just basically take the whole, the whole digits that you have and then say that it's worth whatever the, the one to the right, the farthest to the right is. Um, so in this case twelve hundredths because the, the digits go out to the hundredths place. Let me give you another example, and I think you'll understand very quickly how this can work. What if we have 124.392? And we want to write this in terms of words. Well, this is easy. We say 100 um, and 24. And then that covers this. Now we have to cover what's after the decimal place. And then we say and. Now we know that this is worth tenths, this is worth hundredths, and this is worth thousandths. But I've shown you through the math here that really we can say and 300, 90, and 392 what? Well, these digits go out to the thousandths place. You can say thousandths. Make sure you understand why we're doing this like this. 124 comes from here. This is 392, and the digits go out to the thousandths place. That's why we write it like that. We know that this is worth tenths. We know this is worth hundredths. We know this is worth thousandths. But I'm showing you that if you actually write all that out, it's the same thing as saying 392 thousandths. That's what I was trying to show you right here. Okay, let's do a couple quick, quick other ones real quick and just get a little more practice. What if we have five, nine, four, decimal three? All right, and so what we have here then, we're writing the first part, five, hundred, ninety, four, and, so the 594 covers all the way up to here, and the only thing we have here is three, so we say three, and where is it at? It goes out to the tenths place, tenths and three tenths. So you just write what's after the decimal and then whatever place it goes out to. Last problem, just for a little practice, we will say 724 decimal 701. We wanna write this all the way out. So we have, we know we have a seven, so we say 700. This means 20. And this means four. And then we say and, and then we put everything after the decimal. We have 701. So we say 700 um, and 1. And the digits go out to the thousandths place, so we call it thousandths. Seven hundred and one thousandths. 724 comes from here, and 701 thousands. There you go. And that's the answer there.